Hello all. So I made a video on how you go about wiring up a mini split, how you can install a disconnect, run the wire through conduit or to a breaker, and basically wire up a mini split. And in the comments on that video, I got asked a lot of questions on getting the right breaker size and wire size for a mini split. And so I thought I'd just make a dedicated video on that and go about explaining it along with some examples on how to get the right breaker size and wire size for a unit. And so first of all, if you have the manual for the unit, always follow the manual. Whatever it says to use, always use that. But I know a lot of times this information is not listed inside the manual, and it could be very confusing on what the right breaker size is and wire size you need to get for a unit. So basically the information you're gonna need is how many volts the unit uses. Is it a 110, 120 volt unit? Or is it like a 208, 240 volt unit? But also you're gonna to need to know the maximum amps the unit uses. If you can't find this information, it's going to be listed right on the unit on the outside condenser. It's going to be listed on a label on the unit. And this information is going to be different for every single unit. So whatever breaker you buy and wire size you buy needs to match what the unit is using. And so here's an example of a label on a unit. The power the unit needs is 208 to 230 volts. So the breaker is going to need to be a double pole 240 volt breaker, which I'll show you what that is in a minute. And right down here, it says max fuse breaker. So the max amps that it uses is 15 amps. So that's gonna be the breaker size. This unit's gonna use a 15 amp, 240 volt double pole breaker. A double pole breaker is gonna have legs on it for two wires to go to it, while a single pole breaker is gonna have a contact for only one wire to go to it. 110, 120 units only need a single pole breaker, and 230, 240 units are gonna need a double pole breaker. Also, when you go to buy a breaker, it's a good idea to match the breaker to the panel. Basically, there's different types of panels with different types of names. If you go look at your breakers, you can tell what type of panel it is. Like these right here are square D breakers. And so this is going to be a square D panel. But basically, if possible, it's a good idea to match the breaker to the panel. And so the next thing to do would be buying the wire for this unit. And again, we're going to be looking at the amps this unit uses. So the max amps this unit uses is going to be 15 amps. And you can match this to a chart. You can look these charts up online and you can match them to the wire size. And so in that example, the max amps that unit can use is 15 amps. So it's gonna use 14 gauge wire. If your unit says 20 amps, then you would get 12 gauge wire. If your max amp says 30 amps, then you would get 10 gauge wire. So basically the wire gauge just matched to the max amps that the unit uses. And there can be what's called stranded wire or solid wire. Either can be used. You can use either one of these types of wires. But the stranded wire is the most commonly used when you go and install a mini split. And mainly this is because it's easier to pull. If you have to pull that wire through conduit, especially when there's a lot of corners, then it's much easier to run the stranded wire. So it's best just to get stranded wire, especially if you're going to pull it through conduit. Another thing to mention is this Romex wiring. And Romex wiring is very commonly used to wire up homes. It'll have this cover around it. And this wire can be used when you go to a mini split if it's run through a building, but it can't be used if you go through a conduit. So basically, if you run conduit like PVC or metal or something like that, and you got to pull that wire through it, by code, you're not supposed to use that Romex wiring. Because with the sheathing on it, it could heat up inside there and get too hot and things along these lines. But basically, you can use that Romex if the wires run through a building, but you can't use it if you run through conduit. And so here's another example. This unit's a 115 volt unit. So it's going to use a single pole 120 volt breaker. And down here, maximum amps is going to be 20. So this unit's going to use a single pole 20 amp 120 volt breaker. And if we go match the amps to the wire gauge that can be used, it's going to be rated to use 12 gauge wire. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about choosing the right breaker size and wire size for a mini split. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.